What's up guys, this is Teddy. Welcome to my YouTube channel. This video, I'm gonna be talking about MongoDB and an interesting, this is kind of an interesting story. So I'm originally a .NET developer, but I had to learn MongoDB for work and I had no prior knowledge. And coming from SQL Server and coming from the, you know, a more traditional kind of like boomery world of databases, MongoDB was a total shock to me. And I'm going to try to alleviate that shock with you. Like I'm trying to get you to the point where you can quickly build things, you can quickly do things, and I'm gonna try and teach you everything you need and nothing that you don't. This is gonna be a very real world introduction to MongoDB. And um, I teach a lot of .NET courses, so if you are a full stack C Sharp developer, you probably don't need MongoDB in your tool belt. Um, <clears throat> if you are a full stack C Sharp, you probably want to learn SQL Server. I'm not gonna say MongoDB won't help you, but in order to get that first junior developer role, probably don't need MongoDB. Okay, so before even get getting started, um, just to kind of, explain like I'm five what a database is and I'm very analogy driven I like to I like to compare things by analogies and I think that most people like to learn that way so the way that I describe any database MongoDB included is that it's literally an Excel spreadsheet on steroids it's an Excel spreadsheet uh, a more scalable spreadsheet with its own special language and I say that because Excel spreadsheets, they're there just to hold data. Like that's their only real use. And they have things like um, functions. There's functions in Excel spreadsheets and there's different ways to hold data. And that's really all MongoDB is as well as SQL Server. So this is a SQL Server database, kind of old school. We've had SQL Server since like the 1970s. And MongoDB just showed up on the scene and now everybody's freaking out about MongoDB. And that's gonna kind of bring me to my next point. Let me see here, gotta bring this over. Um, <clears throat> what is it about MongoDB? How is it different? So with regular databases, and just to kind of reiterate, this is a SQL Server database. Old school, boomer, 1970s, I'm just kidding. With SQL Server, you will notice that we have things like nulls, we have these zeros. These are all kind of values that are there to represent data that is not really there. And this is really, really important. Let's look at MongoDB. Huh. If we look at this, we don't really, and we can just kind of get a nice little table view going on. For some reason, well, there's a couple here, but if you notice, and this is m like more than likely, um, you're not gonna see much of this. If you really look at it, there's hardly any zeros. You don't see hardly any zeros. That was kind of a, <laughs> a stupid way of saying that. You don't see, or you, you're you not seeing as much filler data. And that's the reason why people use MongoDB really at the end of the day is because it's schema-less. There's not as many tight logical rules to make sure that your data looks exactly the way that it's supposed to. You see, with SQL Server, you have all these nulls and you have all these zeros because you have a schema. And there's logical rules that you have to follow when you're putting data in. With MongoDB, that's not there. There's literally no rules. We do, like we could have, in theory, all of our data stored in one collection or one table. And in SQL Server, if you did that uh, I, I don't really, I'm sure that there's possible ways that you could, but you would have a mess on your hands. And that's kind of the, that's like the whole reason that we use MongoDB right there. And that's kind of the hack, or that's kind of really, when you think about MongoDB, that's really what you should be thinking about. Um, MongoDB is new. It's kind of like the new kid on the block. And a lot of times people thought, that Mongo, there's way too much hype around MongoDB, but anybody who's a developer, you know, professionally is gonna tell you MongoDB is here to stay. It's got a lot of things with it that are going to make it more attractive than regular SQL servers, but it's not going to kill SQL server because there's SQL server, 
the structuredness of SQL Server data is always going to be needed. And it's like I said, it's not a fad. MongoDB is here to stay. Um, so already covered the schema list. Another reason that MongoDB is very, very um, popular is going to be it scales horizontally. Uh, also, because you don't have as much as many zeros, you don't have as many nulls, um, you're going to be using a lot less data. So your data can go a lot uh, further and MongoDB typically is a lot faster even scaling vertically or scaling horizontally. This is another very important. So scaling vertically in versus scaling horizontally is a term that you're going to see a lot. When you scale vertically, it means you're buying more RAM, you're buying more processing power. When you scale horizontally, it means you're buying more servers and you're scaling them in clusters, which is another thing that we will talk about later. But Vertical scale means you're buying more RAM, you're buying more CPU. Horizontally scaling means you're um, you're buying more clusters and you're kind of like stringing your clusters together. But for the for the beginner MongoDB person, you really don't need uh, to know that 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 much. That's something that's kind of more intermediate and something that we'll talk about later. So the each database is going to have their own slang. Each database is going to have its own words that it uses and mongodb is going to be no different in a traditional sql server setting essentially what you have is you have these things called databases they almost look like you have databases and then you have tables and within each table you have records kind of like like a it's a, it almost sounds like an electronic filing system to a certain extent like you have tables you have records hasn't really changed much since the 1970s and MongoDB kind of takes things and puts it on its head and it has its own lingo and has its own way of doing things. And first thing is that you have to realize is that there's collections and then there's documents. So we're going back to that. We're going back to the new school. So these are actual databases. These are collections. And then within each collection, you have documents. So each one of these is a document and each one of these little things underneath it is going to be a collection. And in a traditional SQL Server database, these are called tables, but just remember, when it's stored as a table or when it's stored as logical groupings and they're not in a database, just remember that if it's not a whole entire database, and it's a collection and it's more than one it's a collection and each individual one is called a document as opposed to a record i don't know really why they call it that and each just remember document is the singular version you're just referring to one collection means almost like a bucket and then more than one collection is going to be an actual database and i'll go back to the visual you know the visual representation just remember database is a group of collections and then documents are going to be each individual record. So a good way to think about this would be we have our Airbnb example. So if we were Airbnb, a collection would be or a document would be one actual house or one actual record and a collection would be all of the actual properties and then a whole entire database would be pretty much the whole entire thing. So we're gonna keep going um, with all of this hype and with all of these, you know, th the hype sur surrounding it, it kind of like leads you to wonder, well, it is like a very good idea, but why, you know, why do SQL servers, why does SQL server still exist? And this is kind of opinionated and this will be kind of relate to, you know, the individual developer the fatal flaw of MongoDB is that the data becomes, because it's schemaless and you can do whatever you want to, the data becomes so unmanageable. Like, look at, like, I had an example one day where it was nested, nest of nest of nest of data. And it's good when you are the database admin or you are somebody who's just pulling the data, but as individually as the developer, having to deal with all of that nested data is a total pain and 
it is just something that uh, kind of just comes with the territory. You get the flexibility of all the schemaless data, but it can be a pain, and that's really where the fatal flaw is. But that is going to be the Explain Like I'm 5 introduction to MongoDB. After this, we're going to talk about JSON, we're going to talk about Beeson, and we're going to talk about the different data types within MongoDB. And then after that, we're going to get into some CRUD operations. Anyway, that's the video for today. I hope that you guys enjoyed this. If you did, make sure to hit that like button. Make sure to hit that subscribe button. And as always, thank you for watching.